On the 14th of May 1940, the British government announced the formation of the local defence volunteers. By late summer, nearly 1.5 million men had volunteered to serve. The force was later renamed the Home Guard in July 1940, but remained under-equipped throughout the rest of the year. Many of the newly raised militia units had just LDV armbands, some civilian firearms and improvised weapons, as uniforms and service weapons were in short supply. I recently came across a really interesting piece of footage showing a Hampshire Home Guard unit training with what was described as an incendiary weapon. With few heavy weapons available during 1940, some Home Guard units improvised. This remarkable original colour footage shows a reasonably effective weapon, but beyond what we can see, we know very little about the weapon. The footage shows a battery of five launchers, each seemingly with a three-man crew. One man aiming, another loading, and another firing. The footage is undated, but from their Home Guard armbands, we can definitely date this to post-July 1940. The men also appear to be quite well equipped, with caps, denim trousers and blouses, and belts. But there's no webbing or anklets, so we can potentially date this footage between the summer of 1940 and mid-1941. The incendiary weapon itself is extremely intriguing. I haven't seen a similar weapon before, and I couldn't find any direct reference to it in the available original documents, newspapers or photos. The footage comes from the Wessex Film and Sound Archive. It's described as showing Home Guard men from Swanmore, a village in Hampshire. Before the incendiary weapon is demonstrated, we see a company-sized force of Home Guard parading, without rifles or other equipment. And then a single Home Guard member demonstrates the loading of an SMLE. From the rest of the footage, we get an idea of how the weapon worked. The men can be seen running to the launchers, which appear to be made of wooden boards. Beneath them are a rifle stock shaped piece, which the men at the rear seem to shoulder like a rifle, probably to aim the weapon. The other two crew members kneel either side of the launcher. The footage then cuts away to another angle and shows one of the kneeling men hitting the rear of the projectile with a hammer. Then, with a flash and a puff of smoke, the projectile launches forward. The man who aimed the weapon appears to have moved away, out of shot. Frustratingly, the footage is a bit underexposed and quite dark, so we can't see much more detail. But we have lightened it a little bit here, and we can see that the chap with the hammer is definitely hitting the rear of what looks like a length of cylinder or pipe. The cylinder shoots to the rear while the projectile fires forward, and the launcher's crew looked out range. This explains why the chap aiming the weapon from prone has probably moved. We then get footage showing what seems to be a series of impacts, likely from the projectiles fired by the launchers. Then we get another clip of the men running to man the launchers, and some more shots of the incendiary weapons exploding. From the available footage, it's pretty difficult to theorise how the launchers actually worked. They appear to be using an almost proto-recoilless principle, with the launch cylinder shooting backwards, and the projectile leaving the cylinder and firing towards the target. The crew member with the hammer might be hitting a percussion cap to detonate some black powder, which then projects the incendiary bomb forward. This system may have been developed to remove the need for a fixed pressure-bearing barrel, making the weapon much simpler to manufacture. The footage doesn't give us too much indication of the range of the weapon, but it is distant enough that the men firing the weapons don't appear to recoil when the projectile goes off. The incendiary effect downrange is actually quite impressive, and a battery of five of these launchers would have been an impressive sight, and perhaps quite useful as a road ambush weapon, which was something that the Home Guard were focused heavily on at the time. It wasn't until later in 1941 that the sub-artillery like the Smith gun, the Northover projector, and the Blacker Bombard began to enter service with the Home Guard. Until then, some units took it upon themselves to create their own weapons, improvising contraptions like the one featured in this video. If you've ever seen a Home Guard weapon like this one, or have any more information, then please let me know in the comments. I'd love to know more about this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and if you haven't already, do make sure you're subscribed for more videos. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us by Patreon. Your help is very much appreciated and really helps us continue to make these videos. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.